Hello and welcome into the Auburn Sportsplex. It's raining on a Friday night, so you know what that means. It's Auburn lacrosse action as Auburn takes on a U, a SELC South Divisional rival in the UCF Golden Knights. My name's Noah Phillips. Gary Guest is to my right. Uh, Rhett Crone is on the camera. We have Jerry rigged this thing up with an umbrella. It looks absolutely fantastic out here. It is raining a little bit, so you may experience a little bit of picture quality as we fight to uh, fight with the lights in the rain to make sure it looks good. But either way, we'll have some smoking hot lacrosse action coming your way just in a little bit. Again, my name's Noah Phillips, and welcome to my broadcast partner, the one and only, Garrett Gesh. Thank you, Noah. Well, I have to say, the fact that we're out here broadcasting this game, I think we've won already. Like you said, the jerry-rigged camera, lots of tape. And if there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's that duct tape can fix anything. And uh, we're about ready to get in the way. This is a big SELC game, like you said. Auburn coming in 0-1 and UCF 0-2. So both teams looking to get their first SE SELC South Division One win today here. Eden, with Auburn... They're looking to win. They'll have Florida coming up next week. That'll be their big game to win if they can win this one. That would all but basically confirm their way into the SELC tournament. Reminder, folks, this top three from both the south and the north with two and three from each division meeting in LaGrange, Florida, before winning and taking on the number one team from the south and the north in the semifinals down in Tampa, Florida. But either way, we do have an exciting matchup as it'll be Jake Kreffitz and number three for UCF. Uh, we'll have these face-offs. It's number three, Aaron Fablo, a freshman from Timber Creek, Orlando, Florida. Again, UCF from Orlando, Florida. I am coming back from Orlando, Florida on spring break, so I feel like I know a lot about this UCF team. Disney World? Hollywood Studios? Where no, we at? I went to Universal Studios. Universal. We, Beautiful. Uh, rode Velocicoaster and couldn't fit on two of their rides, but, you know, we ball. That's right. We, we make it through anyway. Auburn wearing the whites with the navy letters and UCF in the clean black unis with gold tops. All right. It sees the referees are checking Jake Kreffitz's, uh stick. But either way, it is just about time to go as this one's on the net. That's a trip. It's going to be given to UCF, who's going to your left. UCF on the attack. Just five seconds have elapsed already in this one. UCF going to pass it on. Uh, Auburn looking to settle in to their defense. UCF, on the other hand, they've got two players currently back behind goal in the X. Appears that is just a Way to set something up. UCF, two up front, three in the middle, and one back behind goal. Back to the left side, back to the goal line extended, back to the X for UCF. CF, back to the middle. Auburn doing a good job of defending the middle. That's a shot that goes high. It'll be out of bounds, UCF closest to it. Yeah, and a good pickup there by UCF. That's number 20. Jacob Thielen, he has 28 goals for the Golden Knights on the season, so he'll have to be a factor in this one if UCF wants to walk away out of Auburn with a win. The ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Golden Knights. Auburn gets it going the other way. Great defense by the Tigers there. One minute has elapsed. Greg Morgan will start this one off. He'll, as we continue to fight rain here, wind is blowing in my face. That's a long stick there for Ian Fitzgerald. Had a change of jersey before this game started. Fitzgerald, he'll carry it into the attacking third for the Auburn Tigers. He'll carry it back out. He's got a little bit of room to work. Going down the middle. Pass to the X is a shot, but it's blocked. A great save by UCF goalkeeper number two. That's Kurt Brothers. Kurt Brothers. He's been great all season. 57 saves, makes number 58, and stops what looked like it was going to be a sure goal. UCF on the attack now. 13-23, let's be played. 66 on the shot clock. They'll carry it from that right side, uh, closest side to you as you're looking into the camera. He'll take it all the way around. Auburn doing a good job of a double team here. Nearly goes out of bounds, has to make a long pass, but is received as UCF wins the early possession time battle. It's great, great pressure there from Auburn. That's what they want to do. They want to keep UCF star players off the ball keep him away from the danger zone. Number 22, Ross uh, 
Robert Ross will pass this one along. Long pass now to number four, Justin Bonomo. He'll take it inside. Passes back out to the top of the key, number 22. Uh, for UCF, we'll take this one. Ross again, a junior. He'll pass it back off the goal line extended. He's looking for somewhere to go with it. Back to Ross. Back to number four, uh, Burbando. And uh, he'll get a long pass into the middle that cannot be received. Se seven seconds left on the shot clock, but it doesn't matter. Auburn will carry this one uh, on, on the attack now. Auburn a little bit lucky there. That was number 10, Mark Zaccone. He was in a great spot there. Great Would have been a great catch, great spot. Would have been an easy turnaround of fire. Auburn a little lucky that the pass went errant. They're fighting for it now. 12-10 left to be played in this first quarter as UCF is going to carry it around uh, the X there as they look to set something up. Carries it to his right. That's number 20, uh, Jacob Thielen. Thielen, he'll pass it on to number four. Yeah, good individual effort there from number 19. Chad Polanski wins the loose ball back immediately, subs off and gets a can from his teammates. UCF carries it inside. They'll have to go back out as they are going to call too many players inside the attacking third for UCF as Auburn now has an opportunity to go on a run. Coast-to-coast -coast opportunity here over to number five, Miles Lobato. He'll lose it on the pass. UCF goes the other way, 11-25. Let's be played in the first quarter. Looking for the run of Caleb Karanka there, and the Tigers had another good chance. It's the second time they've been one pass away. Just haven't been able to connect so far. Both teams kind of settling into this one here. It's a bit physical, and it's a bit sloppy here in the conditions, as you'd expect. Long stick midfielder. Eamon Cummins takes this one all the way across into the attacking third for Auburn. He'll give it to number four, Miles Lobato, or Hudson Carter, excuse me. Lobato passes the number uh, six, Zach Jones. And that is a penalty up in the up in the air. Auburn has a free opportunity as Ian Fitzgerald takes this one from the logo. Back to number five, Miles Lobato. Noah Fitzgerald has a big game in that 25 jersey. Do you think they let him keep it? I don't see any reason why not to. Auburn. Takes it across to the right side. A long opportunity here. He'll take a little bit of a spin. Passes back out the top of the key to number 29, Jordan so Leslie, but it goes over. Auburn closest to it, but doesn't matter. They'll reset the shot clock, and Auburn will be a man up. Yeah, and that was an absolute rip from so Leslie. Shot clock was going down there, and it was, you know, nothing was really happening, and the Tigers had that knew they had that advantage coming up. So they will retain possession, but... Just an absolute rip of a shot there from Jordan Selesley, one of the captains on this Tiger team. And we'll try to see who that penalty was on. Don't have anything settled yet on the shot clock or in the arena. That would be number 29 for UCF, a 30-second penalty as Auburn will pick this up at the goal line, extend it back over to number 10, Jamie Maroney. Maroney, Zach Jones, back to Selesley, back to number 25, uh, Ian Fitzgerald, keep forgetting he's not wearing 20. Back over to Selesley. Selesley passes back to number 10, Maroney. Maroney. Selesley over to number 4. Selesley passes back to Maroney. Is going to pass back to Selesley. Long shot from Selesley, and it's in. one nothing already. 9.54 as Selesley scores while a man up. Jordan Selesley, been one of the most proactive players for the Tigers so far tonight, getting shots up, getting good chances, finding good passes, and he connects there on a low shot under the goalie's net. And it's a great shot there, of course, uh, with the man-up opportunity winding down, just having to take a little bit of a farther one than I'm sure he would have liked, but he gets into it, gets into his rhythm, and delivers a great shot. And if you want to win this game, if anyone wants to win a game of lacrosse, you have to do you have to, you have to connect on those man-up opportunities, and that's what Auburn did to perfection there. Took their time. They were patient with the ball. Made a couple passes. Found a crease inside and was able to put the shot away. This pass will go over to number 13, Chris Bocic, after the referee awards the face-off to the Auburn Tigers. Bocic passes over to number 77, Thomas Hudiker. Hudiker back to number 50, uh, Michael Kutrowski. Back to number six, Zach Jones. Jones passes back to number 13. Chris Bocic, Bocic back to the top of the key now for Hudiker. He's going to go to his right. He's looking for somewhere, but he can't get it back to the middle. 9-18 left to be played in this first quarter. Number 13, 
Uh, Chris Bocic, he takes it, passes on to the goal line, extended now for Auburn. He'll take it inside. as a shot that goes over. That was number five, Miles Lobato. Lobato doing a great job getting inside. Got around a couple defenders, kept the ball on a stick, just couldn't finish. 9.06 as a Golden Knight was closest to it going out of bounds. Long pass, and they'll connect with it as UCF now enters their attacking half of the field. And the rain really coming down now, as you see evidence by that drop there. I wonder if the conditions are sloppy, if the game is going to be another slip there. This rain is, is coming down hard, but no lightning in the area, so we'll play through it. No, no lightning in the area. I know that was my concern when I first, first woke up this morning and checked the weather forecast. Of course, it's not raining as bad as it did la last time as Auburn was playing. Coast-to-coast -coast opportunity here. He loses it on the uh, way in. That was number 44, Dominic Anacarico. Auburn gets it back, though. That's number number one, Collie Blythe. Blythe pass it back to number 50, uh, Caleb Kor Koronka. Koronka back to number 77, Hudiker. Back to number 13, Chris Bocic. 8-13 left to be played in this first quarter. As Koronka will take it inside the attacking third, back to number 77, Hudiker. Hudiker will take it to his right. He'll take a shot, and he's going to score. Hit the net, I believe. Referee, please confirm it. And they do. 2 nothing. Auburn leads with eight minutes left to go here in this first quarter. And that was an absolute missile off the net there from the Tigers. Looked like the goalie got a stick up to it in time. Looks like that's what we saw it come off, but that was – just straight in the back of the net, and the Tigers go up 2-0 early, exactly the way they wanted to start this one. Need another big part for the Auburn Tigers as we approach uh, the SELC tournament. Very important for seeding is goals against, of course. Scoring goals doesn't help that, but it does help you win this game and make sure that you're keeping the ball and forcing UCF to not score as many goals. Number three. Casey Winchoni will pick this one up for the Auburn Tigers after the one faceoff. Back to number six, Zach Jones. Jones' long pass across the middle is going to go out of bounds. No, excuse me, Miles Lobato will pick that one up. Another faceoff win by Krefitz. He's done a great job giving the Tigers these early possessions so far, and he's done it all season. Number 29, Jordan Selesley. Selesley passes on to Zach Jones. Number four, Hudson Carter will take it from the X. A long pass that this has to be jumped for. Back to number 25, uh, Ian Fitzgerald. He'll take a shot that is going to nearly go wide right, but Auburn closest to it. I thought the UCF goalkeeper, number two, Kurt Brothers, got a, a uh, net or a stick on it. Auburn picks it up in the attacking third. Number four, Hudson Carter makes a long pass that's going to go awry. UCF has an opportunity here. Nobody in front of him. He has an opportunity to shoot, but he won't take it. Great defense, transition defense even. UCF fighting for it. That's a stick on the ground. That was number 29, Jordan Selesley's stick. Great defensive ability there to get back and grab that ball. Yeah, and what a play there from Ethan Pastese. First of all, he gets he gets the close down on the shooter that looked like he had an active lane at the goal, and then he – Comes up with a huge clear. Now Auburn's ready to attack. 6.34 lets be played in this matchup as Zach Jones will take it from the goal line extended. Auburn leads 2-0 early on in this matchup. Number five, Miles Lobato will take it on the left side, right side from the goalie. He'll take a pick, a hard pick there. Zones will shoot, but it'll go wide right. Yeah, Tigers have had no issues getting their shots off. Andrew. Obviously putting pressure on the UCF goalie, Kurt Brothers, early here today. Zach Jones, he'll shoot and he'll score. Top right corner for the senior. 6.03 left to be played in this first quarter, and it's 3-0. After number six, Zach Jones puts one. On top yeah, right. And that's what Zach Jones does best, makes something out of nothing. Not a whole lot going on there, not a whole lot of movement. He just takes matters into his own hands and rips it top shelf. Auburn looking to maybe put UCF away early if they can continue this dominant streak that they've had. Krefitz takes this shot, and that's going to be ruled dead by the referee. It'll be Auburn's ball. Auburn will pick this one up. Number 26, Jordan Selesley. 
uh, Jake Slack will take this one. He'll pass it back out as number 13. Um, Chris Bocic will take this one. He'll pass it out as Auburn will take it. Uh, number 50, Jackson Dedrick will take this one as it'll be over to Hudiker. Back to number 50, Jackson Dedrick. Dedrick will take it inside, looking for somewhere to go. He'll have to pass it out to number five, Miles Lobato. Lobato over to number 13, Chris Bocic. Bocic passes back to Lobato. Lobato with a long shot and a long score. Four nothing is how it lays here. 519 lets be played in this matchup. Back to back goals for Lobato, both from long range. He is willing this Tigers team to a big four nothing lead here in the first. Still five minutes to play. A four goal cushion. That's what we love to see. I believe it is a new face off specialist in the game for the Auburn Tigers. Yes it is. It'll be number twenty two Aiden Garrett, a freshman from Pennsylvania. Both teams are down, and it's referees whistling. Away we go. UCF picks it up in a big way. That's a pass over to the right side, but Auburn's defense able to get back in transition off the faceoff. That's a ball on ground, scrum for it, picked up by the Golden Knights. Golden Knights ball goes awry after the pass. That ball's on the ground again, number 45 is going to pick this one up, and he might have a coast-to-coast. -coast. He shoots, but it goes over a stick. That was number 45, Eamon Cummins, a sophomore from Marietta, Georgia. Great individual effort, and while he doesn't score the goal, he earns us another chance here. Miles Lobato can't get that pass inside just a little bit behind him. going to go out of bounds, 449. Let's be played in this first quarter. Of course, Auburn will cross. Being the only matchup tonight inside the Plains is Auburn softball that you can also hear on Weagle 91.1 FM was canceled for today. They'll play a doubleheader tomorrow against Arkansas as that game will start at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Coverage starts at 11.45. Man, if, you're, if you're UCF here, you need something quick. You know, a 4-0 deficit. It's, it's not unheard of to come back from, but if you go into the end of the first quarter still down and haven't put anything on the board yet, players are going to get down. So looking to score on this offensive possession here for the Golden Knights. 4-13 left to go. Pass inside. UCF is inside. He'll take some. Craig Morgan, oh, gets the stick out there and makes the save. Caden Kohlmeyer from UCF. Great individual move. Put his defender on the ground, but Captain Craig with another huge save. That's what he does best for this Tiger team. Talk about a perfect save. Got that stick almost on the ground in order to make that one. Number 44, Dominic Anacarico will take this one around, and they'll continue to go around the bend for the Auburn Tigers as they look to set something up. Number 10, Maroney will carry this one to his right as he'll have to wait a little bit to set something up. Back to number 29, or 39, excuse me, as Auburn will take this one. That's uh, uh, Hunter Heiderly, number 39. 10, Maroney. Pass number six, Zach Jones. This one now back to Hudson Carter. Jones back to Maroney. Maroney back to number five, Miles Lobato. Lobato, he'll make a run now. Looking for another one maybe. Hildebrand can't get that shot off as UCF will have it. He may, is going to get hit a couple times. He wants to clear it. Three minutes left to go in this first period. Auburn leads 4-0. UCF able to carry it across. That's number five, Parker Savas. If I'm UCF here, I'm looking at my playmaker, and that's who's on the ball right now, Jacob Thielen. 28 goals, eight assists. You know he can make something happen in the blink of an eye. So when you need a goal, that's where I'm going to. Back to number 11, Tyler McMorrow. McMorrow, he'll come inside the attacking third. Two minutes, 30 seconds left to be played in this first quarter. 40 seconds on the shot clock for UCF. Running around the bend. He's going to take that one with a no look. A great shot there and a great goal for Mark Saccone, Jr. Mark Saccone, what a goal. And coming off at 18, 18 goals already this season, 10 assists. Uh, if it wasn't feeling, it was going to be him. And that was just a spectacular individual effort there to get around the goalie and put that one behind the stick of Craig Morgan. Back to number 27, Jake Kreffitz. 
Back into the game now for the Auburn Tigers. 2.23 lets be played. This one is ruled for the Tigers as well as a penalty. As I'll see what the penalty is or they'll give Auburn an advantage. No, it'll be man up opportunity for the Tigers as UCF will fall a man down. Trying to see who this call was on. Your guess is as good as mine for this one. That'll be a 30-second man-up opportunity for the Tigers on number three, uh, Aaron Fabolo. Number 29, Celesley. He'll pass it on to number six, Zach Jones. Back to number uh, 10, Maroney. Maroney, he'll get it back to Zach Jones on the goal line extended. He's going to his left. Back to number 29, so Leslie from the X. Back to Zach Jones on the right side. He shoots and he scores. 5-1. Yeah. Minute 59 left to be played in the first quarter. Gets a great pass and makes it 5-1 with a great shot. And a great shot. You said it. Just a, an incredibly small amount of space there in that top right corner of the goal, but he's got that precision accuracy. Fires it and connects. It's been two... 30-second man-up opportunities for the Auburn Tigers, and they've got two goals out of it. Outside of the rain, it is a fantastic night here on the Plains, and we're glad that you're watching along with us here on Weagle 91.1 FM's YouTube channel. As Krefitz is going to pick this one up, he'll give it back to number th uh, not three. Yes, thought that was a nine. Casey Lynchoni, the junior out of Alamo, California. And Krefitz continues to be solid for the Tigers. He's having a great night off that faceoff. Number four, Hudson Carter. He'll take it from the X. Minute 40 left to be played, 60 on the shot clock. Number 25, Ian Fitzgerald. Again, he is wearing a new number tonight, not 20. As Auburn is going to carry it to the right side, he's got to look for a pass to the middle. He's got fine Fitzgerald. And that one's off a stick, and that one maybe. Oh, I thought it was going to go over the fence. Or over the netting, excuse me, folks. Whoever took that from UCF, well, that was an absolute shot <laughs> off the stick of Fitzgerald. And as you saw, it almost left the entire facility here. I mean, these are some tall nets here at the Auburn Sports Plex, but that ball almost left the building. Minute 15, 73 on the shot clock. I believe the next time the ball changes hands, we will be looking at a non-shot clock matter moment as UCF. Picks this one up from the right goal on extended. And a goal here for UCF to close out the quarter would be huge. You know, a 5-1 and a 5-2 deficit looks and it feels a lot different if you're a UCF Golden Knight. Golden Knights, 48 seconds. One more second than the shot clock. He'll cut to his left, pass back to the goal line extended. Shot passes low as this one's on the ground. Or excuse me, the player's on the ground, not the ball. Long pass to the middle is dropped. Could have been a shot opportunity, but he can't find it. UCF goes to the right. That's some great defense. Can't be picked up by anybody. And that one's going to go in between the legs of Greg Morgan as UCF makes it 5-2 with 26 seconds left to be played. And now it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Loose ball on the ground. Sacconi picks it up and drops it between the legs of Greg Morgan. There you can't really fight the or blame the defense or really blame Craig Morgan for that. Just – as you said it, being in the right place at the right time to pick up that ground ball just in front of the crease and taking one home. 26 seconds here, not a lot of time, but you know the tires are going to get off the face off. Let's see if Krefitz can win another one and spark something quick here for Auburn. There it is. This one's still on the ground. Krefitz is, ah, they're going to award that to UCF. Yes, I think Krefitz uh, did get her, his stick in the wrong place at the wrong time. 20 seconds left to be played as UCF carries this one to the right and is picked up on a ground ball. Now it's in Auburn's attacking uh, territory. Ten seconds left to be played. Long pass inside. Pass to uh, Auburn. That's a shot and a score in the top right for number three, Casey Lynchoni, a junior out of, out of uh, Alam Alamo, California. That is textbook execution. Clock running down. No panic. Some great passes from the Tigers. And another goal that finds the top right corner of that UCF net. And that's what you're really looking for if you're Coach J.J. as the season goes on and in these pivotal SELC South divisional matchups. Is they fight for not only positioning, but for a fight to get into the SELC tournament. And yeah, that's a big swing. Likely the one that will take the life out of UCF. 
six seconds as the referee blows his whistle. This ball is still on the ground, and there is the buzzer as the first quarter ends from a long shot from Crefitz that's picked up. Auburn leads 6-2 in this SELC divisional matchup. Do not go anywhere, folks. We're going to have more for you when we get back here on Weagle 91.1 FM. Welcome back. We have second quarter action here at the Auburn Sportsplex Field 15. The rain is still coming down, but it's subsided here a little bit. Should be some nicer conditions. Noah, what did you like, what you saw from the Auburn Tigers in that first quarter? I liked a whole lot. Auburn, obviously, you look on the scoreboard at 6-2, but I've also liked what's about to happen here with these face-offs. Auburn won every single one but one, I believe, and they'll lose this one here. Yeah, that was Aiden Garrett on the face-off this time. He loses the face-off. But a ground ball picked up right away. That's Eamon Cummins. He's still got it. Takes a couple shots, and he's got some open green grass. Finds a layoff behind the back pass. Owen oh, Hudson Carter tried to rip one top right. Would have been a nice play there from the Tigers. A good pass from Lobato to Carter. Just could not get it to drop. And you know Lobato was going to be kicking uh, Hudson Carter for that one. That's a highlight play if he makes that shot with the behind the back pass. Great effort from both guys. And that's one that ends up on Varsity Club across at the end of the day if the Tigers complete it. But now it's back with Auburn. Zach Jones. Oh, that one's off the stick of Andrew Luff. Ground ball still, and that's going to be picked up. Good recovery there from the Tigers. Now gets it to Fitzgerald wearing 25. Good dump off to Selesley takes one, and he just misses over that bar. It'll stay with the Tigers. Hudson Carter. Carter shakes, bakes. Looking for a guy inside. Doesn't have anyone. Sends it back out. Tries to find Lobato inside. It's going to pop up to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald spins. Gets his man on the ground. And it's another good save there from Kurt Brothers, the Colorado keeper. And I really like the shot selection there from Fitzgerald to try and get that as a uh, ground shot, taking that uh, one-hopper approach with it. Kind of far away, a perfect distance to do it from. Yeah, Tigers had two and one of that ground ball. Can't pick it up. Colorado will try and clear. So Leslie tries to get the slap. Can't get it. And Colorado's going to find, oh, a drop pass there. It's going to allow the Tigers to pick that one back up. Number one, Coley Blythe. He finds Leslie. Good long pass. Leslie finds a guy. He has a shot. And Fitzgerald just misses. And, okay. and we have uh, 13 minutes, 24 seconds left here, and UCF will take it into their possession. Great hustle there from both teams to try to get – Closest to that shot, you saw, uh, I think it was Hudson Carter, uh, kind of spinning a little bit, trying to get his stick as close to the outside as he can. And that was Jack Slack on that last shot. Excuse me. I believe I miss, misspoke. And we're going to have a call here. That's going to be a penalty against UCF. And that was a massive, massive hit. Really delivering the boom there was uh, number 10 for UCF. Um, Mark Sincone with a fantastic hit there 
that'll result in Auburn. Going Tigers through. with some space to run. Finds number 50. Jackson Derrick. Derrick over to Lobato. Now back to Derrick at the top. Tigers will reset. He has Batchage for help. He's going to find Hudiker comes in. Back to Derrick. Derrick probing to his left, looking left. Got a bit of open space. He's going to have a shot, and he's going to score. Jackson Derrick, the freshman midi, gets on the board for the Tigers, and they boost their advantage 7-2. to two. Just a great one-man effort there. Gets it inside and uh, puts one perfectly on there. Uh, goes through some defenders, has to take a little bit of contact, but perfectly gets to the crease and gets a shot up. As you're uh, talking to a kid. Yeah, I think he's asking if he's on TV, you know. You will be one day. Everyone wants to be famous, and uh, I can see this kid behind a camera one day. Yeah, in front of. In front of. It takes a lot of effort to do what we do. It does. It does. <laughs> As you can tell, this is very, very serious broadcast here. <laughs> As the Tigers will retain possession on that one. Good effort there from Hudson Carter to get it. Now it's number three, Casey Lanchoni. Oh, good play inside there. Tigers cannot connect on it. And UCF will pick it up and look to go the other way. Drop big hit there from Zach Jones, but it's not going to be able to jar the ball loose. Lobato wanted a highlight play on that shot, but he could not get it. Now it'll be UCF kind of resetting back to that back right corner. That's Sacconi on the ball now. Sacconi running all the way to the X and now all the way to goal line extended. Finds a bit of space inside. Has the ball jarred loose. Ball's on the ground. This is in a dangerous area. It's going to be picked up by Eamon Cummins. He's been great on defense, and he's been really solid with the ball tonight as well. He's done fantastic, not only on defense but in transition as well. He's made some fantastic passes. A couple big hits from UCF there on Lanchoni, and he can't get it away. Ball's on the ground. It's going to be picked up by UCF. Finds a pass in the middle. They have a bit of space to run now. And they'll reset. That's Thielen with it. Thielen looking right. Now goal line extended, being defended well. Defended by Derek DeAngelis, another Tiger captain. Good move inside. Tries the jump shot. A couple bodies go flying, and the flags do as well. This ball's going to be scooped up towards midfield. Picked up by the Tigers, Eamon Cummins, but it will be coming back. The penalty will go against Auburn. It will, and this will be UCF's first opportunity on, on uh, to have a man up. Very interested to see what kind of stuff they run and what – uh, opportunities they take with the shot. We've seen Auburn take a little bit of farther shots on the man up opportunities, but we'll see what UCF does here. Yeah, great opportunity for UCF to start clawing back in this one. Still down five, just under 11 to play here in the second quarter. The goal here would go a long way for any comeback efforts. Waiting for the ref to give the start of play signal, and we are back underway. UCF still probing inside. Finds Thielen on that goal line extended. Back to Thielen now at the top. Looking for a pass. Doesn't have any guy open. Now he's going to get it back behind the X with number four, Justin Burbano. Burbano finds a guy up top. Slips back inside. 24 on it. That's Caden Kohlmeyer. Good find inside, tried to go with the shot, and that's a huge save from Craig Morgan. A fantastic save by him and a great job to then get the stick on the ball after he uh, hit his chest, really got down uh, there flat to get that one. Also, great job on communication by the Auburn defense with a man down. Here goes Dom Anacarico, big run up the middle. He's going to take this one all the way. He's going to have a shot. He's going to score. Dom Anacarico, coast to coast. Great job by Dominic there. Did not let any bit of physicality stand in his way and took a great ground shot, a one-hopper, so to speak, and gets that one to fall just under really the top of the uh, pillar there instead of bouncing out, bounced in. And when Dom Anacarico gets running like that, it's, it's really hard to stop him. It's really scary to watch as well. I could not imagine being a Golden Knights defender and watching that big, big man run towards me. I, I, would, let him, I would just let him have it. I'd I let would him take too. the goal. I, I'd roll over. I just immediately fall backwards. It's Kreffitz now back in for face-off for the Tigers. And we're going to have a bit of a early movement there from Kreffitz. UCF will take it. That's really been the only reason 
uh, UCF has won any of these face-offs with Krefitz in the game. Most time Krefitz has been able to get off the referee's whistle and get a get a uh, face-off one. Clarkson loses the ball for Colorado or for UCF, excuse me, and it's going to be picked up. That's number 19 for the Tigers, Derek DeAngelis. Good defense there to win the ball right back for his team. 26, Jack Slack running up with the ball now. He's got space to run. He's going to find a guy inside. That was Bradley Meach. He can't handle it, but it's safely back in the stick of Lobato. Lobato finds Carter. Goal line extended down here on this bottom left side of your screen. Back to Lobato. Lobato waits for a couple switches. Taking his time. You're up by six here in the second quarter. No reason to try to rush anything. Set let's your some, offense Let up. some players sub out. Jamie Maroney will come back in as well as number 36, Nathan Zonerick. He's on the ball now. And a bit of an error pass. Will the Tigers be able to maintain possession? Ball still on the floor. Picked up by Auburn. Good move there. And the ball is on the ground once again. Into the crease. Ball still in loose. And that was a long time for the ball to be bouncing around in the dangerous area like it was. It was, and I think uh, they called a Auburn player stepping inside of the crease. Do not know who it was. It was very bang-bang type of uh, opportunity there for Auburn to step inside the crease, but a great job by both teams to really go after the scrum there around the crease. So UCF will take over. Eight minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Auburn still up 8-2 in this second quarter. Good pass by UCF to get it into their attacking third. And absolutely leveled by Derek DeAngelis. Ball goes out of bounds, and the Tigers will take it. What a defensive play. What a defensive play, folks. I'm flexing up here. That would a fire underneath me. Slack now tries to go low on the shot. That was Zach Jones. Auburn will keep it. Hudson Carver was there. And you're seeing a lot of different shot uh, ideals from Zach Jones and number five, Miles Lovato. They're trying different things. They're trying to uh, maybe be a little bit too flashy or maybe just uh, trying to try out some new things as the season – continues to roll on. Now, so Leslie will roll it to Fitzgerald, still in that number 25 kit tonight. A bit of a number change for him. Fitzgerald eyeing down the defender, moves on his left. Still has it. He's going to pass back up to Lobato. Lobato over to Selesley. He has a rip at it. And Hudson Carter is there again to collect for Auburn. Eight minutes to go now. Second quarter action, SELC matchup. Auburn and UCF. Auburn leads 8-2. Hudson Carter now back with it with Fitzgerald. Not a whole lot of movement. Fitzgerald looks to make something happen by himself. Fakes the spin to his left, goes right, has a rip, and he scores. What a tremendous bit of individual play from Ian Fitzgerald. Most people, when they watch that, they're going to watch all the moves he did with his feet. But talk about the great athleticism to get down low and get that shot just towards, just inside the post and so low as well to make it 9-2. And those are some of the hardest ones to save if you're a keeper. The stick's up, the shot's coming in low, it's bouncing, you don't know how it's going to react. And a textbook goal there for the Auburn Tigers. Put them up 9-2 and really take control of this contest. Another face-off, and, <laughs> and I think the stick of Krefitz there was just <laughs> intertwined with the stick of the, the UCF face-off specialist, and uh, UCF's going to walk away with it, but that was in, uh, a little weird weird sequence there. It is a weird night. I hesitate to say it, but the rain does seem to have calmed down a little bit. Hopefully I didn't put the announcer's jinx on it. It's, but we'll definitely start storming here uh, in a matter of seconds just because you said that. I'm sorry, folks. UCF trying to find inside. That's Thielen. Thielen can't handle it. Scoops the ground ball. Not quite, but UCF does retain possession. A nice little fake pass there from Caden Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer all the way across the 22, Robert Ross. And he will reset for the UCF Golden Knights. Moves to his left, beats his man, Karanka. Now 55 for UCF, Connor Smith. He's had a solid season so far. Not a lot doing for UCF. Finally gets that pass inside, has a shot. And that's going to go over the bar. UCF will retain possession. When that jump shot there, they just got a little bit too high, a little bit up towards the apex of his jump with that shot there. Should have waited a second while coming down to take it. Sacconi now has it for UCF. He's trying to back down his defender, number 18, Ethan Pastizzi, on him. 
And he'll force it back out to the top. Moving to his right. Finds a guy goal line extended. Good, good position there from UCF and a great save. Great save from number 34, Craig Moore, and he's done that a lot tonight. And he wins another possession for Auburn and saves a goal. Six minutes here to play. Now Auburn has some space to run. Finds Lobato. Lobato. Hudson Carter now. Number 33, Maguire Savali into the game for the Tigers, and he exits as soon as I say that. Number 50, Jackson Derrick, he scored earlier. He'll find Hudiker who enters. Hudiker to his right. Motioning to Derrick, maybe to make a cut. Not a lot happening. Hudiker now to the X, goal line extended. Finds Hudson Carter. Hudson Carter's a shot, and he just misses right. You can kind of see the whole time it was tailing right of that right post. Dude, and continuously uh, watch Auburn to continuously set up and wait just a little bit longer as time is starting to expire. 5.35 left to be played in this second period. Good job. Good effort from the Tigers. Jackson Derrick to stay on the ball. He's going to find Hudson Carter, and the Tigers will be able to reset with 23 on the shot clock. Good pass inside to Batchett. He can't quite connect. 19 on the shot clock. Tigers will have to get something moving here quickly. They do. Uh, and again, they can. 19 is a lot, a lot of time for them to set up something. And there's nothing wrong with setting up a good offensive play here. Carter has it. Good swim move from Hudson Carter to find a bit of open grass, but good recovery from the UCF defender. Hudiker, a countdown from the Tigers. Hudiker to his feet. And UCF, with the shot clock winding down, is going to be able to pick that one up safely. D there, Hudiker, just maybe losing the feet a little bit. Folks, it is raining. It is a turf field. I know that doesn't have the same effect as a regular grass field, but it still does have it to where you become a little bit more slippery. Yeah, we've seen a number of players lose their footing tonight, and that's become a common theme, as well as some errant passes. And as I said, the ball's on the, on the floor here on the turf. Picked up quickly, though, by UCF. Nice spin move inside from Thielen, and the Tigers jar it loose. Thielen recovers, goes for the hit. A couple big hits there on number 21 for the Tigers, Andrew Grubb. And Auburn's going to be able to pick this one up. Finds the goalie, Craig Morgan, and he will look to clear. And he does. He finds number 26, Jack Slack. Slack over to 21, Andrew Grubb. And now he has some space to run in the Auburn attacking half. Great defensive over there by the Auburn Tigers to continuously push and push for that ball to go up towards the half uh, field line. Just doing a great job playing physical and making sure that UCF does not have a moment to breathe. They have the ball. Tigers have Ian Fitzgerald, number 25 tonight, back in now. Goes right, goes right, still moving. Has a shot. That one looked like it was in. Another great save, a good effort there from the Colorado keeper. That one just found its way off the left post. Looked like it might have crossed the line, but the refs say no. Yeah, and that one could have gone either way. If we had uh, instant replay here at uh, the sports complex, they might would have done one there. Lobato going right. He's going to toss a shot that's well over the bar, and it's going to go to UCF. Yeah, and there just needed to get that shot down a little bit more, maybe work a little bit more into an offense as you have a 9-2 lead. Um, with so much time in the second quarter. Yep, three minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the second. Seven-point Auburn margin. And that margin is going to be crucial, not just in this game today, but for the whole season coming down in the stretch in the SELC season. That goal's allowed big for seeding. So the Tigers will look to keep the foot in the gas, but also defend well here as UCF takes it at the X. We were told the objective is five. Do not let UCF score more than five goals. And if they keep them at two, they will be halfway there. I'm sure Coach J.J. will have been pleased with the defensive effort so far. UCF haven't really had a lot of set plays working. Also been really good physically, Auburn's defense has. They've delivered a couple big hits tonight. Tigers will get it back. Another defensive stand. And grass in front of him. That's number two, Bradley Meach. Still running with it, and he is dispossessed. Great defensive play there from UCF. Now UCF has a chance to run with two 
just over two minutes remaining in the half. That was a great defensive effort from uh, Kobe DiGirolamano, uh getting that stick up there and getting that stick out. Well, that's a name right there. That is a name. Everyone's got one, Gary. Come on now. <laughs> Looks like the Tigers will take a timeout here, and we will take a timeout with them. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Auburn Lacrosse on Weagle 91.1. One. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining here in the half. Tigers up 9-2 to two on the UCF Golden Knights in an SELC divisional matchup. Folks, we are ever so slightly trying to adjust everything with our broadcast to make it better for you and uh, look better in highlight packages as well. Mostly for you, though, folks. Colorado down the ball and or UCF, excuse me, looking to find a little bit of offense. I don't know what it is about the Colorado. They have the gold tops and the black unis, and I called the Colorado game earlier this year. I apologize if I keep calling them Colorado, but this is UCF and Auburn, an SELC divisional matchup. As the shot goes wide, and Auburn will take over. It would be funny if Colorado was in the SELC South Division. That would be a sight for sore eyes. Auburn beat Colorado in a thriller earlier this year, 8-7. to seven. And now green grass in front of Auburn. They're going to have space to run. Oh, and number 36 for the Tigers is leveled. And it's going to be a shot. And Zach Jones does what he does best and scores for the Tigers off a loose ball. A great job by Zach Jones to pick up a ground ball and just deliver a fantastic shot. Uh, got a little bit of green grass in front of him. Got a little bit of green grass. Uh, behind him as well in order to wind back and put that one in the top of the net. Nathan Sonrick for the Tigers absolutely leveled. He did a good job getting the ball into that attacking half. Zach Jones, right place, right time, picks it up off the hit and delivers a huge goal. It is now a 10-2 Auburn lead with a minute and 30 to play in the half. Another more early movement from Krefitz. He's not pleased with himself. You can see as he runs off the field, UCF will take the ball. That's happened the last couple times for Krefft. It's just something he, you know, it's raining outside. You know, maybe he's not getting into the starting blocks as well as he wants to uh, whenever he's down for the faceoff. Just uh, getting a little bit too antsy about getting at that ball. Cole Meyer working for UCF. He has Sacconi for help, and he finds him now. Sacconi up to his left side. He's going to have a long pass up to the top. He's going to reset. Finds number four, George, Justin Burbano. Back over to Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer being pushed off his line by Caleb Karanka. Good defense there. Goal line extended for, for UCF. Probing around his, to the middle. Spin move there from the Golden Knight. That's number 22, Robert Ross. And that's a drop ball. Casey Lanchoni trying to pick up the ground ball. Couple sticks collide, and Lanchoni collects. Looks upfield, finds number 21 for the Tigers. That ball is dropped, and UCF comes away with the ground ball. 25 seconds here remaining in the half. Let's see if they can get anything going before this half comes to a close. 10-2 Auburn. UCF needs a goal here if they want any chance of coming back in this one. Clock down to 10. Still not a lot of movement. 
Now we'll have some movement and a shot. And that one's going to be pushed off the line by Craig Morgan. Still with UCF. Just five seconds left. Not a lot of time here. Going to need a pass into the center. Ball's launched in. Pass is dropped. And that will do it for the half. So the Tigers take a big 10-2 lead over UCF here in a crucial SELC South Divisional matchup. When we come back, we'll have second half action from the Auburn Sportsplex. You're listening to Weagle 91.1 FM.
Welcome back to the Auburn Sportsplex Field 15 for an SELC divisional matchup between the UCF Golden Knights and your Auburn Tigers. The Auburn Tigers lead 10 to 2 at the start of this third quarter. Joining me in the broadcast booth, Rhett Chrome. Rhett, how are we feeling? How have you enjoyed this uh, as your first lacrosse experience? Feeling pretty good. It's been a been a good game. First college lacrosse experience. I uh, had some buddies that played in high school. Don't don't uh I'm going to be honest, anybody watching? I'm not the greatest lacrosse guy. Doing my best here, right? Getting some reps in. Ran camera first half. Feel like I did all right. Um, switching up, so here we go. Yeah, we're going to have a great second half as we are ready to get underway. Kreffitz for Auburn. Will look to win the faceoff, and he does immediately. Great scoop, and he pitches it back to Dom and Akariko, and the Tigers will have first possession in the third. Dom and Akariko out of Niceville, Florida. He's going to dish off to Selesley, and he will exit. Selesley now gets it to number five, Miles Lobato. Tigers going to work into their stuff here early on in this quarter. Bit sloppy there on the pickup from Lobato, and UCF is going to take advantage. They're going to run the other way, and another errant pass picked up by Ian Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald has grass in front of him, space to roam. Still has it, still has it. Now looking for a guy to pass good shutdown defense there from UCF. Back with Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald moves right. Good hesitation. Finds Zach Jones looking for a guy to pass to. He finds Lobato. Lobato drops it again. A bit unsure with the stick here in the first or in the first minutes of this third quarter. And he's going to take a shot and kind of spew that one wide for Auburn to pick up. Tigers on the ball now. Zach Jones. Zach Jones has a rip, and it's a good save from Kurt Brothers, the Colorado keeper. Just had a little open shot there. Took it. Couldn't quite find the goal. Yeah, please work with us here while we're trying to fix our camera. It is raining, and it's a little blurry. Uh, we'll keep you updated the best you can. As Eamon Cummins gets a good defensive stop. Over to Zach Jones. Zach Jones finds a guy, has a shot, and he scores. That's Ian Fitzgerald wearing the 25, and Auburn gets another one. It's 11-2, Tigers. It's a wonderful foot play there started by Cummins. That little pass in just opened everything up, blocked it off on the UCF attack, turned it around real quick, and a great shot to put the Tigers up 11-2. And Noah Phillips, our camera operator, would like to tell Ian Fitzgerald that he apologizes. We did miss the goal. Hopefully the call will suffice. But the camera is back in business here. And the Tigers are once again on the faceoff. Kreffitz. Oh, a couple big hits here, and Colorado's, or UCF's going to roll away with it. Ball now in that back right, back left corner, excuse me. Kind of flipped up, and Auburn will take possession. A lot of space to run. Good play there from Ethan Pastizzi to win the ball for the Tigers, and now there's another chance for them to extend their lead. Some new Tigers in the game. That's Jack Slack, number 26 with the ball. He finds Hudson Carter at the X behind the goal. He's going to roll over a goal line extended, and he's going to find Zach Jones on the pass. Back up top now to Thomas Hudiker. Just trying to reset, move some guys around. Slack will come off, and Jackson Derrick will come on. He's scored already tonight for Auburn. Number 50, he looks to his left, and he's going to find Lobato. Lobato over to Chris Batchich. He's back in the game now for Auburn. First action in the half. Good fake, gets inside, and he just could not quite finish the shot. A good move to get inside and couldn't finish up close. Yeah, the defense was there, was cutting off his left hand. That's what he wanted to go to. It's what he ultimately took the shot with on the spin inside, and it didn't didn't pay off. Auburn still has it. Hudiker up top. Thomas Hudiker rolling right. Now he's forced goal line extended. Still there. Good pressure from, from UCF on defense. Finds Lobato at the top. He has a shot, and Lobato scores for the Tigers. It's 12-2, a 10-goal lead now. Another one just worked it open for the Tigers up top, and that is a strong shot. I mean, just flipped that in there, placed it perfectly. And that's how you want to come out of the half if you're the Auburn Tigers. Extend that lead. Now 10-goal lead with still 11.59 here 
in the third quarter. Exactly. We know the goal is to uh, keep this UCF team under five goals for the goal differential, and Auburn has done that so far. As UCF wins another faceoff, scooped up, and UCF will get into their offense here with number 20, Thielen. Thielen still rolling, being pressured by Eamon Cummins. He gets it to Ciccone. Thielen and Ciccone, those two have been working well for UCF tonight. They make up the majority of the Golden Knights' offensive threat. Ciccone will dish off to 22, Robert Ross. And Ross will roll over to number four, Justin Barbano, and they will reset. Shot clock at 50 here, so plenty of time to work with for UCF. Not a lot of time left in this game for patience, and this ball's going to go the way the Tigers maybe step a foot on the end line there, and Auburn will take over. A lot of pressure in that deep corner from Auburn, not letting them get around, and it forced them out of bounds and just turned them over. And we have a new goalie in the game now for Auburn. That is number 30, Landon Reichert. So Reichert's in, getting some extended minutes. A great night overall from the Auburn captain, Craig Morgan, had some huge saves and ultimately a good line to keep UCF to just two goals on his night. Ball's going to be back with UCF now. Burbano takes it. Looks to his right. No one really inside for him to find. He'll go behind the goal and find Thielen. Thielen working on his right. Gets the stick inside and a good find, a good pass, and UCF puts one on the board there from Ciccone. It's a great pass. And uh, the shot just inside that right post just slotted at home. Mark Ciccone adds to his goal total. 18 goals already and now 19 here as Auburn leads 12-3 to now with 10.36 to play in the third quarter. Number 22, Aiden Garrett in the game for face-offs now for the Tigers. And early movement. This one's on UCF this time, and Auburn will take over. See a lot of those tonight, a couple from each side. I say a lot. Seen a couple tonight, those early movements. Caleb Karanka carrying it around right edge. He gets to, it to Hudson Carter. Carter's been a staple behind that goal tonight. He finds 39. Hunter Heiderali, he's seen extended minutes, and now it's with the freshman Jamie Maroney. Maroney finds Hudiker. Good run inside there from number 36, Nathan Zonerick. Couldn't find him, though. Hudiker still with it. Runs to the center of the field. Has Maroney if he needs him. He will dump it off to him now. Maroney quick to his left, fakes to his right, spins. Finds a bit of open grass. Good, some, some good hesitation moves there from Maroney. Now it's with 29, Selesley. He gets inside. He has a shot. That's 39, excuse me, Hunter Heiderali. And that one's going to go out of play to the Auburn Tigers. Hudson Carter on the ball. Nine minutes and 45 seconds in the third. 36, Nathan Zonerick on the ball. He will find 39, Heiderali. Heiderali back to Zonerick. Zonerick looking to his right. Finds some space. Gets open. Has a shot. Has it bounced off to the left of that left post of the goal, and Auburn will stay with it once again. Push that one a little bit wide again, looking for that right-hand shot. And that UCF has done a good job of closing off the easy shots. Auburn has clearly you know, done, done well tonight offensively, but UCF has, has, has made it hard for them, uh, at least shooting-wise. Tigers being pressured on the ball here, and they're going to have to reset all the way back out to around midfield. Zonerick on the ball now. He takes it at the center. Takes a couple shots from the UCF defender, and the UCF defender ultimately wins the ball but falls down, and the Tigers will take it right back. Auburn's been strong on the ball tonight. They have. Won a lot of ground balls, and that's what's allowed them really to build up this 12-3 lead to the point where it's at. Jamie Maroney had a lot of goals in this early season. None tonight so far for the freshman. He has a rip, and that one's going to go wide. We'll stay with the Tigers. It's a tough angle. He tried to slot it in, but again, that UCF pressure on that, uh, I guess, goal side hand, um, just that, cutting off the angle. The yeah, Tigers really wearing down the UCF defense. As, uh, Hudson Carter takes it again. The Tigers look to attack right again. Zach Jones with a good move, good check there from UCF. And we're going to have, I believe, the stick of Zach Jones just sliced right in half. 
the head of the stick is laying on the field, and, and UCF just takes it the other way with no regard. I don't know if I've ever seen that. That's an interesting play. That the head of the stick is still sitting on that Auburn side. <laughs> Jones goes out to get another one, and UCF will look to take advantage right here. Got to imagine they'll, uh, they'll look to get the head of the stick off the field before Tigers come back down, but it's uh, still sitting there. UCF number 13. Dishes, goal line extended. Now behind the X. Gets it to Thielen. Thielen, a big playmaker for this team. Gets around his man. Finds a pass inside. Has a shot. And that's another goal done beautifully from the UCF Golden Knights. Thielen to Ciccone once again. And the lead is cut to eight. Golden Knights have tried to set up, work out of that bottom corner, that, uh, that left-hand corner. And, uh, yeah, which worked for them that time, and they've scored another goal here. Now Tigers pressure really on that defense to keep it under that. That five-goal limit was the, was the goal going into tonight. That's a tiebreaker uh, within the division, and they know that that is the limit if it comes down to that. Absolutely. It's a tall task now with still 7.30 remaining here in the third, and UCF already at that four-goal spot. Another face-off for Aiden Garrett. That one is dumped off, and Auburn will win that one. A good pickup from Don Manicarico. You've seen him be well, really good in the ground balls and be physical all night. Tries to pass it behind the back. He has a man that's not going to get to him. Hudiker was there, but UCF will take it. UCF now roaming up the right side, a lot of space. Bit of a high step, and now the ball is behind the X, behind the goal. And try to get to Thielen. That would have been the exact same play. That would have been had the Thielen and Ciccone goal rolling, but Thielen just misses the catch, and the ball is out of bounds to Auburn. Yeah, going back to that Tigers turnover, Anik Erico just got a little ahead of himself, pushed himself into the sideline, had nowhere to go with it, just had to flip it across the field, and uh, didn't pay off. Been a little sloppy the last few minutes for Auburn after a great start to the second half. And it comes long pass over Derek DeAngelis. He finds Anik Erico in the center. And Akerico finds Hudson Carter getting closer to goal. Good pass and a one-handed catch. Has a shot, and it's a goal for number 24, Reese DeFilippis. Unbelievable. That catch, I mean, that ball was up high. Great, great find, but a high pass and, and just an unbelievable catch and quick turn to put that in the back of the net and extend the lead back up to nine. It's 13-4. to four Just Auburn. reached up with that left, took a step inside, and ripped it top left. Another tough angle, similar to the ones mm -hmm. we've seen. And he scored. Under seven now. Auburn back within a nine-goal cushion. Good face-off here. One by UCF. Face-offs have, have become a little more even here as we've played out in this game. Number three, Aaron F Fabello for UCF. He's been solid tonight as well. Thielen working on his defender, Cummins. It's been a good matchup. Thielen drops him with the spin move. He has a shot, and that one's going to be saved by Landon Reichert. Good defense there. Long pass. Clear's not going to work out. Number eight for the Tigers. Hampton Yarbrough hits the, hits the deck, but UCF will keep it. Nifty shot there. Great save for the Tigers. As that was a quick little shot from a tough angle. Number three, Casey Lanchoni just steps out. It'll go the way of UCF. You can hear the UCF night players saying, he's out, he's out. It <laughs> was a close call, but I think it was going to be tough to get away with that one. And across the field, they've got the best view, clearly. <laughs> and here comes Thielen now for UCF. Anything when you're down 13-4 to four in oh, the yeah. second half. Oh, yeah. Ciccone has it at the X. Still working. Great job keeping the ball. Turns around, has a shot, another great save. You can see the miss splash off the net of Landon Reichert as he gets his second save of his young campaign and the young night here. Good find. That's the long stick number one, Coley Blythe. He has a rip, and that would have been an excellent coast-to-coast -coast goal there from Coley Blythe. Ball goes wide. Auburn will keep it. Hudson Carter will take it out the back. Find to Philippus. Tigers with a bit of a, a line change here. Jackson Derrick back in, number 50. He has the ball now for the Tigers. Gets to number 36, Nathan Zonerick. Zonerick finding some space inside, dumps it off to Hudson Carter. 
Back out to Derek. Derek shimmies left. Finds a bit of space. Finds Hudiker on a pass. Hudiker will rip a shot. That one just misses to the right of the post. More intense pressure here from the Tigers. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep it on, pour it on. It's been a physical game, and uh, we've seen a, seen a lot of hits late, uh, especially when the Tigers have it in the attack in third. Jackson Derrick over to Thomas Hudiker, number wearing number 77 for Auburn. Gets to the center. He winds up. He has a shot, and he scores. Thomas Hudiker, a great goal. And the Tigers back within a 10-point cushion. Hudiker deserved that one. He, he has been... All night, he's been strong with the ball in possession. He's taken a lot of hits, and he's done a good job of just holding on to it. Um, he's opened up a lot of the play for his teammates and uh, getting a goal there. That's nice for him. 4.53 here to play in the third. 14-4, to four, Auburn. Another face-off win for Auburn. It's number 14 in the game now for the Tigers. Hunter Butterworth. UCF will keep it, though. Thielen still doing work for UCF on that left side. He loses the ball, gets it back. Good defensive pressure there from Derek DeAngelis. Oh, Thielen has grass to run, open space, makes a tough move, and a great save there from Landon Reichert. It looked like Thielen had a direct shot on goal, and Reichert turned that one away. It was a great pass, split open the Auburn defense, and I mean he was he had all the room to work with and just couldn't take advantage. It's a good thing for Auburn. Keep their lead at ten, keep UCF under five. Good scoop there from Hyder all on the pass from Reichert. He will settle it down, and he will get ready to go to work for the Auburn Tigers. Hudiker finds Hudson Carter. That's sorry, not Hudson Carter, that's forty two. Michael Duffy now in the game behind that goal. Number 99, Tyler Ward, also makes his first appearance on the night. Ward finds Maroney, Jamie Maroney. Tigers in no rush here to get anything going. Over to Duffy. Duffy in the back. Finds Ward. Ward makes a couple of moves. Still inside, still moving, and a good save there. New goalie for Colorado, number 16. That's Jake Kaplan. Tough UCF defense again, just shutting off that angle. Very physical. Uh, that's that they have done a good job defensively. Obviously, Auburn has been able to get on the board, and we we kind of expected coming in they'd be the better team. Uh, but it, but uh, UCF has been very physical defensively, and nothing has come easy physically for Auburn. Now it's with Ward again. Ward gets by some UCF defenders. Ball rolling around that crease there, and there's the flag. The flag is going to come out as UCF will have the advantage. Couple good moves from number five on UCF. That's Parker Savas. Savas now with some space in front of him to roam. Good hesitation and fake there to get under the head of Caleb Karanka. UCF still keeping it. Now the ball pops way up in the air. Battle for positioning inside. Ground ball up for grabs. Still on the turf. Picked up by UCF. Now over to number 24. Caden Kohlmeyer, and he will try and settle down for UCF. Robert Ross. Ross gets Burbano back up in the offensive half. Back to Ross. Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer shakes left, goes right, has some space. Kohlmeyer wants to shoot, and it's a good close down from Karanka. Gets it inside of number four. Burbano, he shoots. And that one will sail long and wide. A lot of work there for UCF to get open. Ultimately had, had to take a tough shot. Shot clock was running down. They still had about 14 seconds left. But got to take one eventually and uh, tried, to, tried to sneak it in down low. Couldn't quite find it. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. 14 to 4, Auburn leads UCF. We have a stoppage of play here. Not quite sure what it's about. And we have a, it's going to be a power play here for UCF. That's the flag that happened a while ago. I forgot about that happening. UCF had the ball for so long there in the offensive half. Mm -hmm. Now gets it up the top to Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer to Thielen. Ball's revolving around that UCF attacking half. And a good pick there from the Tigers. 
number 18, Ethan Pastizzi. He's had a couple good defensive plays on the night, and he releases Dom Anacarico. Here goes Anacarico. He already has one coast-to-coast -coast goal, levels the defender, spins, keeps the ball. <laughs> what? I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening, not but... A the ball never left the stick of Anna Carico. Not we have a couple sure. whistles. We might have gotten a timeout there from, I think we got from a UCF. Out. And, and the coach saw what was coming, and Anna Carico was just running through everyone. But they take a timeout here, so we will take a timeout with them. Don't go anywhere because you're watching Auburn Lacrosse on Weagle 91.1. Welcome back to Weagle 91.1 FM. We're at the Auburn Sportsplex. It's Auburn Lacrosse and UCF in a divisional matchup. Rhett Chrome on color. Garrett Gesh, the man, doing play-by-play -play in the third quarter. We got a minute 30 to go. Tigers coming out of a timeout. Garrett, uh, what have we seen so far today? Well, Auburn has done a great job offensively, just getting through their plays, finding great passing. And there's been great individual efforts as well, mm -hmm. great cuts inside. And just the shots, the pressure, that's what's been working well, so well for him, and that's what's allowed him to build up this 10-goal lead. As Selesley now on the ball slips, tries to pick it up. Fitzgerald, Selesley, some of the starters now back in for the Tigers, as you, uh, you would think they want to really maintain this four-goal number for UCF. Selesley works around his defender, gets it to goal line extended, now passes up in the center to Hudiker. Hudiker going to center. There's going to be a flag that comes out, a big hit that was laid on Selesley. So Tigers will have the advantage here. At the next time UCF picks up the ball, Hudiker still working. Not a lot of movement inside, and he's going to launch that one all the way back to Lobato, and the Tigers will reset. Lobato from deep range looks like he wanted to have a shot. Selesley, good fake, spins to his right, has a rip, and that ball looked destined for the back left corner, but a good save there from the Colorado goalie number 16, Jake Kaplan. Yeah, you got to think that look at a long shot is a sign that Auburn is, is, is open to just playing loose offensively here. they got a big lead. They're going to try some new things out. Uh, obviously, defensively, still very important. Um, hold UCF. Uh, goals against is a, major, uh, is a tiebreaker um, when it comes down to ties in the division. We know that UCF has scored, uh, I believe, five against Florida State or Florida, uh, one of the other divisional teams. We know that Auburn is trying to keep them below five. So offensively, um, expect to keep seeing it free-flowing as it's been, but uh, defensively uh, they need definitely need to lock down when UCF has the ball. And after those two goals, they scored in quick succession there. They've been really solid defensively throughout the rest of this quarter with just 45 seconds remaining in it. Auburn's still up 14-4 on the UCF Golden Knights. Hudson Carter gets ready to pick up. Before we start play, I just want to give a shout-out to Noah Phillips on the camera. He's been working through some tough technical difficulties. <laughs> it's been raining. It's been blurry outside, and he's done a great job to bring this broadcast as we are back underway. 40 seconds to play. So Leslie over to Maroney. Maroney finds a guy behind the X. That's Hudiker, number 77. Back over to Maroney. Batchage picks it up off a hop. Good catch there from so Leslie to keep it with the Tigers. So Leslie back to Batchage. Looked inside for Hudson Carter, couldn't get it to him. Now it's back out to Selesley. Hudiker fakes the pass. Long over pass to Jamie Maroney, and he just misses the shot. A good find there from a the Auburn Tigers. A great find. I didn't see where he was going with that at first. Found him right there on that on that uh, far post for him, near post for the for the receiver, and uh, just just couldn't quite put it in. 
Going back to Noah Phillips, wouldn't be Auburn lacrosse, lacrosse without rain, but it very much would not be Auburn lacrosse without Noah Phillips. That's right. We appreciate him here. At Absolute Weagle. veteran here at the Auburn Sportsplex, Noah Phillips. Eight seconds left, and it looks like the Tigers will just wait this one out. Ian Fitzgerald has it. And the clock will expire on the third quarter. A solid quarter for the Auburn Tigers. They lead 14-4. to four. Don't go anywhere. We have one quarter to play in this SELC South Divisional matchup between the Auburn Tigers and the UCF Golden Knights. You're listening to Weagle 91.1 FM. Yes, sir. Hello and welcome back into Auburn Lacrosse. Auburn leads over the Golden Knights 14 to 4. We have one more quarter of action left to go here. My name's Noah Phillips. The man on my right is Regret Chrome and the man now on camera, the one and only Garrett Gesh. But Red, it's been a fun one so far. What have you seen? It has. I've seen an excellent offensive effort, an excellent effort all around from Auburn, but uh, clearly getting it done on the offensive end. UCF has been a very physical team. They forced Auburn to play a physical game, and Auburn has shown up and done it very well. Auburn now man up here with a minute nine left on the power play as Hudiker will pass this along back to number 29, Jordan Selesley, back to number 10, Maroney. Maroney back to uh, to uh, Hudiker. Hudiker's going to fake a pass, give it back to number 10, Maroney. Maroney coming across the bend, back to number 29, so Leslie, who will fake a shot and go right. Still a lot of time. Eight seconds on the shot clock, though. Hudiker back to so Leslie. So Leslie, four seconds on the shot clock. So Leslie inside to number four, K, uh, Hudson Carter. That one gets lost in translation, and UCF will carry it the other way. 40 seconds still on the power play, 14-23 lets be played in this fourth quarter. Auburn leads 14-4 in this SELC Divisional South matchup. UCF has got it along the crease, but there's still a man down, so it would not have been the best of intentions to shoot there. So Auburn could have got it back. They'll be looking to waste another 20 seconds of this penalty. Yeah, and they've got plenty of time in the shot clock to just wait it out and get into their, uh, get into their offense. UCF, number five, uh, Parker Savas, a senior defensive midi from New Samaria, Florida. Picks this one up on the right side, going across the goal line, extended hill shoot, and that'll go off the leg of Greg Morgan. Auburn's going to pick this one back up. Auburn still needs to keep UCF below five. Now back over to number 88 for the Tigers. Caden Stankley, uh, number 88 for the Tigers. He'll carry it to his right, back over to number 25, Ian Fitzgerald, not wearing his usual 20. 13-14, let's be played in this fourth quarter. A long pass over to number five, Miles Lobato. Back to number 25, Ian Fitzgerald. Lobato and Fitzgerald now taking an opportunity to quit a fast run back over to number 42 for the Tigers. Now it's back over uh, to number 24. I've forgotten uh, 42 and 24 uh, messed up in my brain there. Back over to Miles Lobato, whose pass is going to fall on deaf ears, intended for number 24, Reese 
to flip us. Yeah, UCF defense did a good job that time. Auburn kept trying to switch it back to the weak side, and nothing was there. UCF was shutting it down. That was a good defensive possession for the Golden Knights. UCF on the right side. Looking for somewhere to go is number 19, uh, Chad Polonski. New goalkeeper in now for the Auburn Tigers is Randon Reichert from the one and only place filled with happiness, Boca Raton, Florida. UCF carrying across the right side. That one is lost and picked up by all the Auburn Tigers. That's number 55, Caleb Karanka. Karanka, he'll carry it inside. He's going to go back, though, and let something get set up. Boca Raton, home of Auburn quarterback Sean White. See, I always want to go there. I, I need a fishing trip down to Boca Raton. I know spring break was like a week ago, but either way, Ian Fitzgerald's going to carry this to his left. He's inside. Uh, has an opportunity, but he won't take it. 11.52 left to be played in this fourth quarter. Number 16, Broden Morgan. Morin uh, takes this one for the Tigers. He's going to take it inside. He'll have to get a pass out back to the goal line extended for the Tigers as that one is lost, and it will fall out of bounds. That pass again uh, intended for Reese DeFlippis. Yeah, Auburn, Auburn getting a little sloppy offensively. We saw it a couple times. In the third quarter, they got a big lead. They can afford to do it, but what they can't afford to do is give UCF more opportunities, and that's what they've done right here. 11-24, UCF looking for a coveted fifth goal against the Auburn Tigers. Auburn, they need to win against UCF here, and if they can beat Florida, potentially Florida State, that one passes inside and a goal. That's number 55 for UCF. Uh, Connor Smith, a junior out of Lake Worth, Florida, but most importantly, UCF reaches five goals with 11 minutes and 10 seconds left to be played. I don't think five is itself the tiebreaker. I think it is the limit. So Auburn still um, – this is also just a theoretical tiebreaker, of course. Auburn can continue to, uh, to play well, and if they can dominate in the division, the tiebreaker won't matter at all. They will need to defeat Florida – Coming up this Friday, and Florida State will have to defeat. Uh, excuse me, Florida will have to defeat Florida right, State right. Uh, in order to f face the three-way tiebreaker. All three of those teams will make the SELC tournament. It's just a question of who gets the bye into the semifinals in Tampa, Florida. Imagine Auburn fans are uh, a little tired of hearing about tiebreakers. <laughs> they are. <laughs> Yeah, I imagine the whole SEC is a little bit tired of <laughs> yeah. hearing about tiebreakers as it is March, folks. Uh, Auburn carries this one across the goal line to extended. Auburn, long pass back to the other side of the X. Now that's number 24, uh, Reese DeFlippis. DeFlippis will get it back to the goal line extended for number 48. That's uh, Sean Connolly. Connolly passes it back to DeFlippis. DeFlippis. He'll carry it to his left side. A little bit of room to run in front of him. 40 seconds on the shot clock, 10.27 on the big clock. As number 16, uh, Broden Morin, he'll take it to his left, cut to his right, has an opportunity. He'll take some physicality. Back over to number 88 for the Auburn Tigers. He's going to cut to his right side. That is Caden Stanky. Stanky takes a shot, but it's uh, deflected and saved. Excuse me, UCF. Carries this one, uh, gets that one from Stanky. I looked down at my notes for a split second, folks. I'm sorry. UCF carries it into their attacking third. That's a spin move and a shot that's going to be uh, sent wide left. Really wanted to say Riker got a save there, but just a little bit closer to him, we would have got it. Yeah, he uh, didn't really need to stick uh, stick the stick out there for that one. Well, that's hard to say, stick the stick out there for that one. That was a beautiful little spin move. Got real low and opened up a nice lane to shoot. Just couldn't put it on frame. 9.42 left to be played here in this SELC Divisional South matchup. Auburn leads 14-5. UCF goes to the right side. This one is a ground ball, but it's picked up. Opportunity here for UCF to get six. This ball's on the ground, though. Great defensive effort for number 31, Ian, Cal Ian Calvert, who's going to get this one to go across. That's number 23, uh, Austin Faber. Faber gets a pass inside. Back over to number 88, Stanky. Stanky gets a shot, and he scores. A great job there by number 88 to make it 15-5. to Auburn now leads by 10. 
That was some unbelievable placement. Just put it up there in that top corner. Uh, but he had a wide open shot. Uh, as much as we've talked about UCF's physicality tonight a couple of times uh, that Auburn has scored, they've been wide open. So I don't know if that's UCF overrunning it, trying to be over physical, or if it's just Auburn being a little bit more precise with their passing. But that was a beautiful shot from a wide open position. A fantastic goal there from Stanley. I can't read Garrick's handwriting. Uh, I can't hear me. A UCF carry, gets the face off there. 8:48 lets be 8:58 lets be played in this four, uh, fourth quarter. Auburn now leads by 10 after the goal from Stanley. Stanley might have a new nickname. Stanky. Ah, I don't know if that's gonna fit. Ah, I don't know. If that's uh, I don't know. That shot was stanky. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. Oh, that's kind of like that. <laughs> night, like that. Well, it's been a long night, Noah. It has been a long night. As UCF's gonna carry this to their right. That's the number four, Justin Br Brombo. Brombo. Passes this one off. This one's on the ball on the ground now. Golden Knights with the golden helmets. They'll have to set something back up around the Auburn logo. Long run here. He'll make a play to his right pass towards the middle. A lot of physicality across the middle as well. This ball's on the ground. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Auburn trying to win a scrum. UCF picks it up outside of the crease. This one's on the ground. It's going to be picked up by Riker. A rush of bodies right there. Everybody around the ball, nobody could find it. It somehow snuck out to the right-hand side, and Auburn comes away with it. Auburn has an opportunity to put this game on ice. They even bleed a little bit of clock. 7.47 lets be played in this matchup. Auburn carried this one outside of the attacking third. Back to number 99, Tyler Ward. Ward, back over to number 41, Colby or Doisy. Doisy is going to nearly lose his stick there, having to do a one-handed magic show. He gets a pass into number 10, Maroney. Maroney goes inside, a pass and a shot and a goal and a penalty flag as well. Couldn't get a number in time. There it is, number 39, Hunter Heiderly with a fantastic goal there. He takes a lot of physicality, and he makes it 16-5. Ardazi with a great pass to Maroney. He had so much room to work and just pick out a pass that led to the score. Um, that, was, that was just pretty offense, a lot of movement on the ball, um, opening up room off the ball. As we say down here in the south, that one was purdy. Mm-hmm. It'll, yes, sir. There was a flag up in the air for a big hit, and it should be on a UCF player. Auburn should have the ball, unless they say advantage in, on the uh, goal score. Trying to figure out a name and a number. Who that big play could have been on. Indeed, it was on UCF for the face mask type of hit. Be on number, it'll be a one minute penalty on number 48, Andrew Bowman, a senior. It'll be number 14, Hunter Butterworth, a junior from Dallas, Georgia, will have an opportunity here to win a face off. There's the referee's whistle, and away we go. This one's still on the ground. Butterworth had to get his foot outside of the way for it to be picked up, but it will be ruled in the Golden Knights' favor. It has been a slippery night in the oh. faceoff spot. It's slippery everywhere, but it has been notable there in the middle of the field. Excuse me, folks. Auburn is going to be awarded this faceoff with seven minutes and three seconds left to be played. They'll uh, be man up for 51 seconds when we come back after this timeout here on Legal 91.1 FM. Don't go anywhere. 16-5 is your score. Thank you for listening so far. We have a fantastic end of this fourth quarter coming your way just after this.
and welcome back inside the Auburn Sportsplex. They say it does a man no good to pay for play for pray for peace and rain, but folks, it's not raining anymore here at the Auburn Sportsplex. And Auburn leads 16-5 in this SELC divisional matchup. Rhett Chrome next to me. I'm Noah Phillips. Gary Gesh is on the camera as we look forward to this one. Auburn's still a man up with 40 seconds left to be played. Uh, or excuse me, 40 seconds left in the power play and 649 left in this quarter. Auburn across the goal line extended over to number 29, so Leslie. Back to number 10, uh, Maroney. Maroney passes this one off. That's a like, so Leslie is going to tip that one in after the pass from Maroney. Gets it just in front of the crease and taps it in. It's now 17-5 here at the Auburn Sportsplex. Well, it pays off to be in the right place at the right time. Sometimes you'll you'll take a, a little bit of luck. And uh, I, to be entirely honest, not really sure how that one went in, but it found the stick of Selesley and just popped into the goal and put the Tigers up. And uh, you said it does no good to pray for rain. These Golden Knights might be praying for daylight as uh, this is going to be a long night for them. Long ride back to Orlando, Florida. Of course, there's Disneyland, or not Disneyland, Disney World, Universal Studios. I was at Universal for spring break. Don't mean to brag. <laughs> Playing got the leg because the guy jumped the gate. It was it was a sight, folks. Oh, was, cops had called. It was beautiful, Rhett. 620 lets be played in this matchup. UCF still a man down for five more seconds. They'll carry it across the right side of your screen. And they'll set something up from the goal on extended. They'll need... That's a shot, and that is a goal there for UCF. Was looking down at the moment trying to read names, but a great job there from UCF, UCF to get a goal. Yeah, that's the goal that Auburn didn't want. We know the, that goal's against tiebreaker, and that puts it at six. Um, again, restate, this is a theoretical tie that has not happened yet. If Auburn continues to play well and the, the cards fall the right way, it won't happen at all. But... With that, Auburn, I believe, is now not in first place in that tiebreaker. Well, it's goal differential in total for the SELC uh, South Division. So it'll be uh, – you also have to incorporate the UCF or USF uh, Bulls and mm -hmm. Florida and mm -hmm. Florida State themselves. But it always helps to be a game ahead. Right, yeah, I believe the comparison that we heard from Coach before the game was just the comparison to how Florida and Florida State played against this Central Florida team. A lot of Florida teams. Well, if you look at the map, it's all Florida and then Auburn. It's quite hilarious for the SELC uh, South. It's Florida, Florida State, UCF, USF, and then the Auburn Tigers. Otherwise known as the Northwest Florida Tigers, right? The, the Opelika Tigers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a great save there from Reichert. Fifteen, five minutes, ten seconds left to be played in this matchup as Auburn is going to carry it across half uh, field as that's number 23, uh, Austin Faber, a junior from Hopridge, New York. UCF carries it across their right side. This one is going towards the crease. It's a shot, but it's deflected off Landon Reichert's stick. Yeah, just tried to get a quick shot in there. Had a quick little uh, little counter, but nothing doing. Auburn defense has been tight tonight. 4.52, and Auburn can call themselves the winner tonight as UCF will get a spin in there in the middle of the field. That's a shot, and it hits the ground first before going in. That was number 28, uh, Vincent Lopez, a senior from Longwood, Florida, to make it 17-7 here with four minutes and 42 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Try to slot that one down low, and he was a success. You know, turf, you know, the ball the ball moves a little different on turf than it does on grass. Um, and I don't know if uh, UCF plays on grass at home, um, but the uh, reaction of a ball coming off the turf, that thing wants to move. And uh, that's a hard, hard ball to get in front of if you're Auburn. Not only is it faster but it's also takes harder balance oh for well. sure it now in this weather um when it's you know it's about 70 degrees here tonight 
it's uh, it's not going to be as notable as it would be when it gets hot. When it gets hot, turf becomes just about concrete. Uh, it's painted green. Um, but, yeah, for sure it is a harder surface uh, than just the natural ground. So that ball wants to move. Indeed it is as Auburn making some changes over in the offensive position as that was a flag. Uh, it'll be a 30-second penalty on Aaron Flobo, the freshman face-off specialist. Auburn will take this ball and look to maybe get up by 11. Hudiker over to Maroney. Maroney back towards number uh, 29, Jordan Selesley. Selesley over to Ian Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald passes inside. That's a shot, but it cannot fall for number 13, Chris Bocic. Back to number 77, Hudiker around the crease. Back to number 29, Selesley. Back to number four. Hudiker takes a shot, but it's off of a uh, pad there as Ian Fitzgerald picks it up and puts it in just inside of, next to the crease. Auburn with multiple chances there. One of them eventually fell. That first chance, a, a beautiful cut in by Chris Bocic, and they found him, just couldn't get it to go. But uh, ultimately, Ian Fitzgerald cleans it up and puts the Tigers back up. 18 to 7. Four minutes, 10 seconds left to be played in this matchup. You can see the referees communicating to each other. I believe it's another penalty, and yes, it is. One minute this time for number six, uh, Casey DiGeralamo, a freshman defender. DiGeralamo, DiGeralamo. We don't need uh, Kobe. Auburn, Auburn uh, takes this face off. Long pass now. Back inside to number 14, uh, Hunter Butterworth, face off specialist. Butterworth gets it, tries to get it to Stanley, but it misses. This one is going to go out of bounds off the stick of an Auburn player. 41 seconds, still man up opportunity for the Tigers. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in this matchup. UCF will have it coming out. By, behind their own goal. Passes back towards the middle. They're trying to make a run at half field. They'll get it across. Two, three, 27. There's still a man down for 15 seconds. This one on the ground. Referee's whistle blows it dead, and it's going to be for a Golden Knight timeout. Do not go anywhere, folks. 3.20 left in this matchup, and we'll give you the last of it here on Weagle 91.1 FM. Oh, wow, love a rainy night, but it's not a rainy night right now. 3.20 left to be played in this fourth quarter. Auburn leads 18-7. Auburn also a man up for 10 more seconds, despite the fact that Auburn will have the ball. Rhett on my right, Gary Gesh on the camera. I'm Noah Phillips. It's been a wonderful time bringing you this game. We have jerry-rigged an umbrella to cover up uh, our camera. Got to hand it out to Gary Gesh and Rhett. Uh, with with that idea, would not have came up with it, but great job by them as Maroney passes it back to Stanley. That pass is going to go wide to number 39, uh, Hunter Hatterf Hatterfield. Uh, Stanley takes a fake shot, shoots holy pretty hard. Holy cow. As you said it, holy cow, what a rip there. That thing was humming. Oh, my. 
It'll be Auburn ball. They are not a man up anymore. That's, uh, you know, no, that's that's why I didn't play lacrosse. Because uh, if uh, that hits me, I'm uh, I'm done. <laughs> that was also the reason I did not play lacrosse, not because I'm unathletic, but oh. because I would have been scared being hit by a ball like that. <laughs> For sure, man. That, that thing was moving. That's one you're going to think about tonight in your dreams. You're going to be like, man. That's going to scar you for life, Rhett. That is. And that bright yellow ball, I mean, it just looks so fast. I mean, it's like a tracer round moving through the night. You can see it. Stanley, he'll have the ball here. 63 seconds on the shot clock, 302 on the game clock. 30-second penalty for UCF. Auburn's still a man up. I lied to you. Stanley, over number 39, uh, Hatterfly. Hatterfly, he'll give it. Back to Hatterfly. He'll take a pass on the goal line. Extended shot goes wide. That's number 24, uh, Reese DeFlippis. Auburn, still a man up, 12 seconds, 2.44 left on the game clock. That's number f uh, 41 for the Auburn Tigers. Back to DeFlippis. Back to number 39, Colby and Erdoise. This one, big hit there. Auburn has an opportunity. Tyler Ward delivers another big hit. Back to even Stevens with 2.25 left to be played in this matchup. 18-7 is your score. Back to Stanley, who's going to shoot and go wide right. Auburn closest to it with 36 on the shot clock. That was another one that was moving. Stanley just ripped that thing. He puts that on frame. That's uh, likely a goal, but couldn't quite do it right there. Might tear the net in half. Stanley, he's going to cut to his right. That's a shot, and it's going to fall wide left again. That one... A ground shot. Took the hop. Couldn't uh, get it to hop in the goal. Yeah, Tigers look like they meant just be having a little bit of fun. That was a, uh, a wild shot to take, but uh, he got he got, got closer than uh, than I thought it might be. Number 41, Colby or Doisy. Back out to Tyler Ward at the top of the key. He's going to cut to his left. He's going to take a shot, and that's going to be right into the chest pad of the Golden Knight goalkeeper, number 16, Jake Kappel. And turn it right back over at midfield. And Auburn's got an opportunity here. They could go middle of the coast to coast. <laughs> Auburn gets it back out. Number 99, Tyler Ward. He'll give it to number 10, Jamie Maroney. Maroney back to Ward. Ward, he wants something bad in a big way. He's going to cut to his right, a big, big man going against uh, over to Stanley, who's going to shoot, and he's going to score. Caught the just right outside of the goal to make it 19-7, Stanley with a fantastic goal. Beautiful. I mean, a great pass in and then just slotted at home. There was power on that, but there was finesse, too. We talked about that one that was humming earlier. That thing was moving, but placed perfectly. Nearly hitting the post on that right side, just fell just inside of it. Tigers 19, Knights 7 with a minute 16 to play here in the fourth quarter. Auburn is going to pick this one up. That's number 14, Hunter Butterworth. He's going to get a pass off, and that's a shot, but it's saved. Number 15, uh, Justin for Donnelly with the shot there. This one on the ground after a long pass. 53 seconds left to be played. That's how many more seconds are left until Auburn comes away with a big SELC Divisional South win unless something crazy happens. UCF gets a long pass but is picked off. Uh, excuse me, Auburn with an opportunity here to get something going. Back to Stanley who's going to fake it. And he's going to score. I think that went between the legs right there. Great job by Stanley to make it 20-7. to seven. And you may have heard Gary Gesh. That's disgusting. Just posted up there on that outside post. Nobody near him. Got it. And uh, – Big man makes a little man move and puts it, puts it home right between the legs of that UCF goalkeeper. Basically perfection tonight for the Auburn Tigers. 30 seconds left to be played. Of course, we touched on the uh, goal differential stuff for the what could be a tiebreaker coming into that SELC mm -hmm. tournament as Auburn is going to pick this one up off a gr fantastic faceoff from Hunter Butterworth. Ball is still up in the air. 22 seconds that to be played. UCF picks it up. 
as this one is picked up again by UCF. They're going to make a long pass, hits the, uh, hits the ground, 13 more seconds of combat to be played. Auburn is going to lose that ball. You can start hearing the countdown. Six uh, seconds is all that we have left here inside the Auburn Sports Complex. Auburn leads 20 to 7. And it's been just about wire to wire domination by the Tigers tonight. There is your buzzer, and Auburn has won their first matchup inside the SELC South Division. A great showing by the Auburn Tigers today. A fantastic job. Rhett, tell me what you saw out there. Well, like we like we knew coming in, I say knew, like we expected coming in, Auburn was the better team here today. UCF did a whole lot of fighting. That is a physical, tough team that's going to make it hard for anybody that they play. Um, but Auburn, Auburn was just the better team today. They looked very, very good. Indeed, they did. And Auburn's going to look to be carrying this momentum into this Sunday against Western, Western Michigan again. We'll have that game right here on Legal 91.1 FM as it will surely be a fun one. But their Auburn is also going to be looking to carry the momentum from that game on Sunday into their series in Florida this coming up next weekend as they'll have two more SELC Divisional South opponents in, four, in the Florida Gators and the USF Bulls. But we want to thank you for tuning in with us tonight. Uh, Auburn wins 20 Two seven, a fantastic job by the Auburn Tigers. It's been real fun for us to call. We'll see you on Sunday for myself, Noah Phillips, Rhett Chrome on my right, Gary Gesh. We want to thank you all for listening. War Eagle, and it's MCLA for life.